our first speaker. Uh, we're going to talk about marketing today. We're going to have three presentations, um, and then uh, we're going to have lunches for everybody. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce my friend Tyson Mutrix with the Mutrix Law Firm. Tyson is a dynamic, young, powerful marketing genius. <laughs> Go ahead, Tyson. That's too much. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. All right, I need this. So before I do anything else, I'm gonna get a volunteer. Anybody? Not not big. So. Anybody else? Anybody need one volunteer? All right, would you do me a favor and give me your email address? What's your name first? Darren Sorrell. One second. Bring up the email already started. What's your email address? D S O R R E L L at S O R R E L L. T R A U B like boy E dot com. Make it easy on me. Um, and what was the first name again? Sorry. Darren. D A R R E N. One R and an I. Gotcha. All right, so this is the email I'm sending you. Respond to my assistant whenever she uh, whenever she sends you an email. Okay. I'll come back to you later on. Okay. So I'm gonna read this back to you though. It's D Sorrell at SorrellTrabi.com. Yep. Yeah. And here's the email to you. It says, Darren, let's, just, let's pretend you just called my office, okay? Okay. We, you, you were calling about a case. Okay. Then you're calling about your case. Let's meet next week to discuss. Amy, please schedule something at my office. Okay. I'm saying that to you now. Just confirm that you got it when you get it. Okay. And then I'll come back to you. Should okay. I reply or just raise my hand? Reply to my assistant's email. Okay. okay. All right. Who am I? The husband. The, the reason why I'm, I'm telling you this, this is important to me. This is... I'm a husband first, a father second. That's very important to me. Everything that I shape about my life goes about that. When it comes to marketing, all that kind of stuff, I, I care about my family first. Okay. Uh, I've got three kids, Emma, Hudson, and Jackson. We're going to go to Disney World in a few weeks. We're excited about that. So, I'm a marketer. Okay, I've got a marketing degree. We can't try cases. We can't practice law until we have cases, right? So I'm a marketer when it comes to my firm. I have to bring in cases, and so do you. I'm an entrepreneur. I own my own firm. I run my own business. Those of you that have your own firms know how, how difficult it is. I'm an entrepreneur and I'm a trial attorney. I've only tried two cases this year. That's the, the, the fewest amount of cases I've ever tried. I usually try at least four a year. I take that very seriously. So even though I'm talking about marketing, just know I take that part of my life very seriously as well. All right. So I'm also the co-host of the Maximum Lawyer podcast with Jim Hacking. We talk about a lot of things we're going to talk about today, a lot of things you're going to hear today. You're going to hear from Jim Hacking. You're staying all day. We talk about marketing, office management, productivity, things like that. Uh, we've had awesome guests like Lee Rosen. Anybody heard of Lee Rosen? Okay. If you if you do any family law, he's a big time marketer when it comes to family law. John Fisher's coming on. Dean Jackson. Dean Jackson's big in the in the marketing world, and then also Seth Price we've had on. My firm. I'm giving an idea of what. The dynamic of my firm is. I'm the attorney. I had a, an associate earlier this year. Started his own firm, uh, but now I've got. It's an office manager, Kelsey. She's also a legal assistant. My receptionist, Angie. So those are the three of us are in house. We also have a bunch of virtual assistants. I had more virtual assistants than this, but of course, kind of pared it down to what exactly we need. I got a transcriptionist, Gino. So everything that we do in my office is a system, right? So I dictate a bunch of letters. I do it from my phone. This is how, this is how structured things are in my firm. And I got the email from you. Thank you, sir. So I use this voice record app. I'll dictate a letter, or actually usually a series of letters. Once I'm done with that, it'll go directly to Google Drive. Gino pulls it off. He uh, transcribes it, sends it to my assistant, Angie. She prints it off, I sign it. Okay, once I've done it, it's done. I sign it. I uh, proofread it obviously when it comes out, but everything's in a system. After I do a lot of videos, um, some of you may see on them, some of you have it. We have a bunch of videos we recorded, we put on YouTube. Um, once I've recorded the video, it goes to Nadish, Nadish edits it. He then sends it to Gino, Gino transcribes it, and then Nadish gets again, puts it on the website, and YouTube, and then sometimes we send it out to Twitter, uh, Facebook, all that. that. That's determined by me. Podcast editing, we do a lot of podcasts, the same thing, same process. Francisco does the podcast editing. Jim and I will record a podcast. He'll go to Google Drive, he edits it, and then he releases it for us on Google. 
And I'm putting here, this is my secret weapon I'm telling you about, Infusionsoft. Gary knows about it, Nadim knows about it. I handle far more cases than many of you because of Infusionsoft, okay? I automate everything that I can automate. And <clears throat> some of you probably think, well, automation, that's gonna take away the, uh, the personalization of handling a case. It's not true at all. It increases the touches the clients get from you. So automation actually improves the client perspective, the client uh, experience. <clears throat> All right, so I'm gonna talk about note taking really quick. So you do have my PowerPoint slides. I want to tell you that you're gonna hear takeaways today, and a lot of people what you do is you take a bunch of notes, and you won't do anything about it. You're gonna probably throw them away when you get back. But on one side, I would, I would take a line, draw it in the middle. On the left side, take your notes. On the right side, if you have a key takeaway, those are your action items. Put it on the right side. At the end of the day, or in between breaks, do something and do that action item. Okay. So that's a key way of, of moving forward, getting things moving. That way you're not wasting your time today. You actually have takeaways that you can act upon and believe. All right, so these two books, I, I assure you, I'm not being paid for this, uh, this advertisement, but these books, if you read them and you actually absorb them, they will change your life and they will change your careers. The first one's The Go-Giver. Just to summarize it, it's if you give more to life, you will or then, then you take you will achieve success beyond your dreams i can guarantee you so giving back is very important i know gary gives back quite a bit all of that will come full circle um that's a, just a real generalization of what the book's about it's i'm telling you it'll really change your life the 12 week year 12 week year is different it's going to help you organize your life instead of thinking of your years and years think of them in 12 weeks at a time and I'm not going to tell you this to brag and tell you that how effective this is. In the final quarter of this year, because of the 12 week year, I will settle more than 35 cases. My firm, three people, will start to settle 35 personal injury cases. There are some of you in this room probably won't settle 35 cases all year, all right? So we will settle at least 35 cases in that final quarter of the year. My small firm, me, two in house assistants, and a virtual assistant, 35 cases. That's a lot of cases for, personal, for a personal injury attorney. It's all because of the 12 week year. I can guarantee you. All right, freebies. So, who has not had a date with their spouse in the last month? Darren, just you? All right, well, here you go. Read this book, absorb it, and then take your, your wife on a date. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> who has zero marketing experience, zero marketing training? Gary, get out of here. All right, well, influence, this is the bedrock, okay? This is not life-changing, it's not gonna you know, change your world, but this will give you the bedrock principles of marketing. It's uh, Influence by Robert Cialdini, it's fantastic. So if you don't have this book, get it. It, it talks about reciprocity principle, a lot of the other things that, are, that really shape marketing. And once you read it, you'll notice, when you read it, how you are being affected by the marketing message you receive on a daily basis. So I, I highly recommend it. All right, so everything we talk about, am I, if I go this far over, am I out of here? Nope, you're good. I will move it. I, that's why I'm here. Okay. <clears throat> so all the stuff I'm going to talk about today, none of it matters unless, number one, you track your numbers. All right. Does anyone know what, uh, everyone know what KPIs are? Gary, I know you do. KPIs, you know what those are? Those are your key performance indicators. Those are things like incoming leads, new clients, incoming money into the firm each month. Those are things, example of KPIs that you want to track with your firm. You have to track them. That is the bedrock of all of this. You have to track your numbers. So I can tell you all my marketing tricks. It won't matter if you don't track your numbers, okay? Because this is going to give you an insight into where your firm is headed. If you don't have clients coming in, obviously your numbers are going to start going down. And you're not going to see the signs unless you track them. The next one is next one is track your leads. But the more important part of this is follow up. What's going to set you aside? For, uh, apart from the other attorneys that are marketing that are your competitors is the follow-up okay so create some sort of system for the follow-up because they're gonna call a bunch of attorneys and they're gonna get one call from an attorney uh, as a follow-up and that's gonna be you right so if you set a call, uh, something on your calendar you'd call today right and tomorrow you, you put on your calendar to call mrs. Jones back these other attorneys aren't doing it you're gonna get that case all right so it's a, it's a simple way of just following up and getting a case 
and I don't know why these are ones, but it should be one through four. Um, number three, systemize everything, absolutely everything. So from when a, an item comes to the office, whether it's a piece of mail or a court memo, it needs to go to a specific place and go to another place, another place, another place until it gets in that client's file and something's done on it, okay? So there has to be a system for everything. So your marketing has to be systemized. Your your day to day practice of law has to be has to be you okay? I should wait, okay. Has to be systemized. And the final one is if you're not gonna hustle, some of some of you may not care about bringing in cases, that's fine. But you, if you are interested in bringing cases, you have to hustle. It's a constant hustle, it's a constant learning curve. You have to constantly do do new things. All right, so what this presentation it's for you if you're ready to roll up your sleeves and do a little extra work in 2017, okay? It's not a lot of extra work, but it's a little bit of extra work. It's also free if you want more clients. Like I said, if you don't want more clients, it's no big deal, it's fine. You can kind of hit the snooze button for the next 50 minutes and don't worry about it. Uh, it's also free if you've seen a decline or leveling off of new cases, okay? So this is gonna give you some tips on how to get new cases. And also if you think that traditional advertising is the way of the future and that's still the way it's working, it's not. Um, you all know that the, the ones that advertise in, in the city, um, they, they make money, right? But their profit margins are razor slim. I know that because I used to work for them. Right? They're razor thin margins. And if you want to look to a, a, a guy that's making good money, it's, it's doing it the right way, I'll say, with high profit margins, is Gary Burke. Okay? So um, Gary does it. He's, it's more of a uh, guerrilla marketing thing. Gary does it the right way. Um, I guarantee his profit margins are much higher than a lot of those other firms that advertise. <clears throat> All right, in the next 55 minutes, I'm gonna tell you what the marketing trends are for 2017 and beyond, and then how to destroy your competition in 2017, okay? Sound good? Yep. All right, all right good, good, all right, good. All right, so imagine if to the December 2017, so a year from now, you have doubled your income. Imagine that. It'd be pretty nice, right? It'd be pretty awesome. Imagine that you can finally take that vacation. Derek can take his wife to, uh, on a vacation because he has on a date with her in, in, in a month. You can have that vacation, right? And imagine you're not worried about where that next case is coming from, right? Because sometimes that can be a worry is where's that case coming from? What if you can get rid of some of those worries? So I'm gonna tell you a story. Summer 2014, so I started my firm in 2012, had a really good year. 2013, had a really good year. 2014, summer 2014, I started to see this thing, right? This thing, like, uh, what's going on here? I'm, I'm, I'm not making the money I once was. Um, I had gotten into the pay-per-click game much earlier than most attorneys. And I remember when it hit, I, I haven't looked this up, but I bet if I looked up the Missouri Lawyers Weekly article whenever it hit, it was in 2014, the summer of that year, or a little bit before that, because they put on this big spread, it was multiple pages about pay-per-click, and I was like, the wave of the future. Does everyone know what pay-per-click is? Who does not know what pay-per-click is? Okay. So when you go to Google, those top ads, uh, whenever you're in the search engine, that's your pay-per-click, right? And you see them all over the place now, Facebook and everything else. But I, they put, had a big ad about that. And once that happened, I started to see my numbers in decline because the competition increased and my cost going up because that cost per acquisition of lead went way up, right? So. I thought I was, I invented marketing at that point. It's like, oh, I'm making really good money, you know, getting all these new lead, leads, all that sort of level off, right? So, uh, as you all probably know, search engine optimization for personal injury cases per pay-per-click uh, is very competitive, and it's it's only gotten more and more competitive as every year goes past. So I had to think of something new, and I had to think of something fast. And as a, as a small firm, as Gary knows, and many of you all know, Doug knows, it's a CD, is that right? It's, it's easy to remember. Yeah. Um, and they know it's it's tough bringing in new cases, right? You have to do new things. You have to you have smaller budgets than these big firms. You have to find new ways. So, video video is number one. Nadine. Can we interrupt while you're talking, Tyson? Absolutely. Okay. Okay, uh, do you by any chance know on top of your head the cost for pay per click for you know car accident or anything? I know it was up there. Right? I would say a minimum of three thousand a month is going to get you some cases. A minimum of three thousand a month. Right? Gary, do you agree? Well, the clicks, you know, if you're in the St. Louis area, the, your clicks are between... Oh, you're asking per, uh, per click. Per click can be 50 to 80, 50 to 90, a click, a lead, where they go to a website or a landing page. Um, but you can, anyway, but if you go to rural areas, it's different. But then if you say car accident lawyer in 
um, bridged in it may be different. So there's different, there, there are way, if you get a smart SEO guy who's kind of a gorilla SEO or gorilla pay-per-click guy, that's sometimes worth, worth the investment. Absolutely. And some of those are even over a hundred bucks, depending yeah, on the keyword. They can Trucking get. cases, they're going to be, it's going to be a little bit higher because um, there are people spending a lot of money. They're bidding on these keywords. It's driving the, the rates up. All right. So once I started doing video from 14 to 15, I doubled the size of what I was bringing in. Okay. And from 15 to 16, I doubled it again. It's all because of video. All right. And you're going to see a common trend of things I'm going to talk about. Most of it has to do with video. Okay, the, that's where things are going. That's the reason why is 80, 90, 80 to 90% of web content. So you're, you're used to seeing blog posts, pictures, things like that on the internet. 80 to 90% of that in 2020 is gonna be video. So everything you're seeing is going to change, right? So it's all gonna be video, or at least the vast majority of it is. And you're starting to see this stuff with Facebook Live and all that where they're, they're, if you have the Facebook app, who has the Facebook app on their iPhone? I don't have an Android device, but if you notice on your Facebook app, they've added a video button at the bottom. Let's see if this come up. Right here, so they've added the, the video button at the bottom. I mean, that was something they've added in the last month or so. And things are, I'm gonna talk about something else in a little bit that's gonna be even more ridiculous. <clears throat> so this is my video views in the last 18 months, right? You see a steady, uh, it's more about the steady incline, okay? These are the minutes watched. You see it on the rise, it's the last 18 months. It's just on the steady rise. Okay, so video is key. Video is absolutely key. The next thing is Snapchat, and I'll be completely honest with you. And the things I'm gonna tell you about, these are more, I'm not using all these things, but I'm telling you what the trends are. I don't get Snapchat. It's for it's really for the younger generation. I don't understand it at all. Um, I just know that it's it's here to stay. It's not going anywhere. All right. So if you want to get into it, you might be able to dominate the market. But I want to give you some ideas on how you can use Snapchat. Um, you can definitely use it to build brand awareness. Uh, maybe doing creative snaps. Um, something I've thought about doing is doing influencer marketing. There are influencers in our communities, right? That that if you get them in front of you or to endorse your product, it's gonna make a difference. So um, you could use some sort of influencer in your practice area to to come do some sort of snap with you and, and you can get that out to your people. <clears throat> you can earn foot traffic by offering incentives to do a snap in front of your business. So let's say 25% um, off whatever practice area you're gonna offer, whatever service is gonna be. If you take a snap in front of our uh, uh, building and, and show it to us or tweet it out or whatever, right? You can do something like that. Um, you can also boost marketing campaigns by using snaps as teasers. So something that we started my firm, I guess it was last month in Thanksgiving, <clears throat> we're offering free legal services uh, for criminal clients that are better, that were veterans, okay? 100% free, right? So we pay expenses, everything, 100% free. So what I could have done is I could have teased that, hey, we've got a new announcement at the Matrix Law Firm, check us out on Facebook or our website, whatever. I could have done a teaser with that. Uh, I didn't because I don't use Snapchat. I've got Snapchat app, Snapchat app. I, like I said, I don't get it. Um, you can showcase new services if you have new services at the firm. Um, you also show fun behind the scenes. So something that I'll talk about a little bit too, Clients like to see the stuff behind the scenes, like what's going on in the office, doing trial prep, things like that. We as attorneys don't care what other attorneys are doing for the most part, but they do. And they really, they, they soak that stuff in. That's, what, uh, that's why there have been so many legal shows in the last 30 years, because people really like to see what the, what's, what's behind the scenes. All right, so number three is live video streaming. Okay. Live video streaming is going to be huge. If you all seen all the commercials for Facebook Live, it's it's ridiculous. Uh, Facebook Live is big. The thing I was going to talk about with Facebook Live, they're now in the next few months going to add 360 degree videos, which is I don't know how that's going to work with a, with a normal phone, but they're going to offer 360 degree videos. So when you're in the office, you can show what's going on completely around you in the office. So it's that's going to hit. It's going to hit in the next few months. Something I do want to point out, um, if you're going to devote your time and efforts to something, the videos are not searchable on Facebook. Um, and that's a key distinction to YouTube Live, which is the third one on here. YouTube Live, which most of you probably don't even know about, but there's the same function on YouTube 
once you record those videos, they will save to your account and then they are searchable in Google, which is a key difference. Now, my guess is that Facebook is, is going to try and compete in that arena somehow. And they're gonna change how they do things and make them searchable, but right now they're not searchable. Uh, Instagram, is, Instagram is owned by Facebook. You can now do videos on Instagram. That's very similar to, to, uh, to Snapchat, but um, they're not going anywhere because they were just purchased by Facebook, so know that. Periscope, anybody heard of Periscope? I think Periscope's dying out there. You're, I've heard of it. So Twitter had purchased Periscope and it hasn't really taken off and I, I'm pretty sure they've jettisoned them. They're still around, they exist. Um, the, the app still exist, but I think it's dying out. So if you're gonna get into Periscope, it's probably a bad idea. <clears throat> um, YouTube ad advertising. This is going to increase. Much of the advertising is going to go, what I talked about before, with the web content changing. Um, it's going to go away from, it's still going to be the AdWords type of format, but it's all going to be on the video now. Um, so if you want to get into video, probably now is the time to do that. Get on the video advertising. And I'm going to show you where those kind of show up. And again, because by 2020, because of the way the web content's changing, YouTube could be the top search engine. But again, Google owns YouTube, but I'm sure they don't want to be completely replaced by YouTube when it comes to the search engine. So I'm sure there's going to be some sort of way that they're going to change it. So I'm not positive YouTube's going to, surpass Google, but there's going to be some sort of implementation where they merge. So these are the, the advertising formats. <clears throat> and so the, these are red boxes. You can't really tell, but the darker boxes are where you can do the advertising. A laser pointer on here. But there are multiple ones. I can't really point to them. So the top left is you can, do, you can advertise on that right side. The second one is in stream where you can't skip those ads, or we actually can skip the ads. Those are the ones where it says you can watch, uh, it's got a little timer in the YouTube video and it says you can skip after so many seconds. There's also in, in stream non skippable ads, which those are going to hurt some sort of content viewing because I don't, for me, I don't like waiting for a third, full 30 seconds to watch an ad. I'll skip onto the next video. So you may want to avoid those, but there's those. There are the overlay ads. Those are the ones where, as you're watching the video, the overlay comes up. So let's say you have a video that you put out, um, and I could I could put an ad. Let's say it's, let's say it's about auto accident cases. You know, if you were just injured in an auto accident, give us a call at 888-550-4026. I can put that as an overlay, and then you can click the ad, and it'll go down. But that's an overlay ad. Um, you can use sponsored cards. So as you, this is a, a very similar to the overlay ads. So as you're doing the video, cards can come up and they're clickable links and you can click on it, can direct them to your website or whatever. Nadine? How targeted can you go with that? What I mean is by Facebook, I can zoom it in on Afton and say all Bosnian Americans that you know it, you or was, live in Afton, I want to be in front of them. You can do it as much as you can with Google, right? With 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 AdWords. So it's pretty complex, but it's not as good as Facebook. Facebook targeting is far better. Uh, but it's not as good. It's 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 you have the same um, options, demographic options, everything else that you do with Google AdWords. Does that make sense? Makes sense. And then there's also shoppable ads. Those are the ones on the far right. So they're kind of to the right <coughs> of the actual video. Um, those aren't going to be seen as much. I think it's probably a waste of money if you spend money there. All right. So the next one is, that I want to talk about is Instagram Stories. So this is just a blatant ripoff of Snapchat Stories. Um, and Snapchat Stories is different from Snapchat. Snapchat, Snapchat Stories is within Snapchat. Um, it's actually the last 24 hours of videos and photos. Well, Instagram didn't even change the name. They didn't even change the concept. They just stole it and they're doing the exact same thing. Um, I want to talk about this one as opposed to Snapchat because um, TechCrunch calls Instagram Snapchat for adults. This is where more people in our demo are, are going. All right. So if you're going to do any sort of advertising or do any, any sort of uh, Instagram stories, then you would do it on Instagram. Um, that's my suggestion to you. And an idea what you could do is, um, been doing trial flat, doing trial prep, you know, and you have a series of trial preparation uh, pictures of you, um, you know, in the conference room with all your stuff sprawled out. You need 24 hours of those videos and pictures, and that's an in, uh, it allows your potential clients to see an insight into, into how you operate. <clears throat> so, um, you can do it in a very similar way as Snapchat. You can deliver special offers, uh, flash sales. You can do day in the life stories. That's kind of what I was talking about. Not attorneys love this stuff. They really, really, really do. I just humor me and 
after you go leave today, put a Facebook post about, or a video or something about what you're doing today with you inside your firm, in the courthouse, whatever it is. You get more clicks on that, more views on that than most of your other stuff. The only thing that's gonna beat that are kid pictures and family pictures, stuff like that. Those, those will definitely destroy anything else you do. But when it comes to any sort of generic firm post, if you do a you know, day in the life type of post, you're gonna be far better. What about bare feet in the courthouse? <clears throat> That did far better than I thought it was, but it that was, was amazing. A, that was a day in the life, right there. Right? I'm, I'm sitting in court. I took a picture of a guy. He, I, was, I was sitting in court, and he was uh, his shoes were off, and we had no actually had no shoes in court. And I took a picture of it. It took off. I mean, it was insane. I, I but those are day in the life type of things. So those are pictures that people really like to see. And there was um, there was a po comment which kind of sums up how non attorneys view it. She said. You, know, you attorneys have all the fun uh, because I mean that's how we are viewed. We're viewed as having fun. This is a fun job. I think it's a fun job, and and they want to see that kind of thing, right? I'm glad you. I forgot about that. Thanks, Gary, for mentioning that. You can show your process for getting the job done. Um, I just I have to also say this, and I probably shouldn't have to, but I say just be careful with attorney client privilege, work product stuff like that. You don't want to get caught posting that stuff. That's that's a bar complaint you don't want. Okay, so post this stuff, but be careful how you post it. I, when I take pictures of my office, I orchestrate it where I even like make sure that there's nothing even in what well, they can be zoomed in on my photos where a client's name will be on it. I mean, there are, you gotta be very careful with that stuff, right? Because I don't know about you, I like clicking on people's pictures and zooming in to see what I can see in the picture. So people do that, they'll, they'll check out your stuff. So be careful with what you do. <clears throat> um, story takeovers. This is a really interesting thing with Instagram stories. You can take over someone else's Instagram account for 24 hours, or you can have them take over yours. And this is, I've never done it, but you can do it with influencers like what we're talking about. I'll give you an idea how I was thinking about doing it. I could take over a chiropractor's account or a doctor's account for 24 hours and talk about the importance of an attorney in an auto accident case. Or they could do something about making sure you get the right care in an auto accident case and they could take over my account. So those are ways that you can let someone take over your account or you can take over their account and you can use them as an influencer to get, get clients. So uh, in preparation for this, a lot of this stuff was I, I, I did some research too. And I was actually, this is the second biggest surprise. There's another one that I'll show you a little bit. But Gmail advertising, right? It's growing. It's getting better. And it's, it's basing Google AdWords inside <coughs> someone's Gmail account. Now, if you use Google Apps for Business, this won't apply. You won't get these ads, but if you have a ge generic Gmail account, which over a billion users do, you are in. They are in their email, and you got ads right in front of them. And some of them are as small as this. They're text and an image. So you can see, this is a general ad for Atkins, right? Um, the, the, uh, that health food, whatever it is, um, company. It's not really what they would call them. They're the ones that are low calorie, or whatever, low carb, or no carb. So this is just a generic one that you'd see a ribbon above your email. But you also, there are ads as big as this, right in their face. Um, then you've got the ad over to the right side and you've also got that big ad right in the middle with a call to action and they've got this, um, uh, gosh dang it, a lead uh, generation. Right, so it's a little middle there offering, get your buy one, get one free coupon, right? So. Uh, lead magnet. I couldn't think of that term for some reason. That lead magnet right in the middle for you to click on. So this is just how you can do the the demographics, how you can choose how, who to target to, and this is kind of goes to your point, Nadine, what you're asking. You can you're not just going to send this out to everybody. Uh, you're just going to waste a bunch, of money, a bunch of money doing that, but you can limit it down to people living in St. Louis, Missouri, or Bridgeton, Missouri, a certain age demographic. Um, you're going to want to cut out anybody below 18, things like that. Um, Nadine. You could do Bosnian, people that speak Bosnian, right? I mean, so you could do a lot of this, and you're putting these ads right in front of them. So this is the second biggest surprise for me. Am I going too fast? Or you're doing okay. great. I just want to make sure. <clears throat> and I know the topic is five, the top five, I'm doing 10. I want to get more in, on this. LinkedIn, all right? So LinkedIn did something in the last two months, or actually, I think in the last month, that sort of changed things. They were behind YouTube, Facebook, all the social media outlets, Twitter, in offering pixels, and now they have a pixel. Who here knows what retargeting is? Yeah, I know Gary does. So you know when you'll go to an ad, let's say you're shooting, searching for shoes, and Nadine goes on there and searches for shoes, right? Well, then ads are following him around the internet. Now, now LinkedIn has that. They didn't have it before, and now LinkedIn does. 
Now, I think, and this is my opinion, um, and this is more for business to business stuff, but what you can do is you can do it for referral partners. So when you're thinking about LinkedIn pixels um, and advertising, think more towards who you're going to get your referrals from in your advertising. So um, I'll give you an example. I can do a lead magnet directed towards chiropractors and doctors saying how, how most auto accident victims screw up their personal injury case. And those are be targeted towards or screw up their medical care during an auto accident case. And those are targeted towards chiropractors and doctors. And I can do I can follow them around the internet. Um, and, and I don't know if you've noticed, but I get a lot of Brown and Crouppen ads. I get a lot of Page Law ads because I'm an attorney. They're, get, they're getting very similar ads because they're doctors and chiropractors. Okay, so if you can get into that, get in front of them all the time, they're thinking about you, um, you can possibly get referrals from them. Excuse me. Drink water. Yes. B two B. Yes. Business to business. Okay. Thank you. That's as opposed to business to consumer, which would be our clients. That's a good question. So native advertising. Who here knows what native advertising is? All right. So native advertising has been around for hundreds of years. There. Is that the one where you're looking at the say post dispatch website and you have the one that's a real story and then right next to it looks like a real story absolutely until you look real close you don't yes. realize i get ink magazine and fast company and entrepreneur magazine and they're the best at doing this so you'll read an ad or you'll you'll go through and you'll read a story you'll read a story you'll read a story and you read another story and at the end of it, it's a per, uh, company's logo and you're like that was an advertorial like i like i didn't even know that was a a, 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 a an advertisement and what they do is they're offering something of value to you, right? And they're they're talking about something important. And the whole thing is is they're they're making themselves look good. And you don't realize it. And then they have to disclose that they are advertising to you. But that's how they do it at the very end. You know, a lot of times when you're reading an article, you don't go to the very end. You're kind of skimming through and you're getting the main the main nuggets, but you don't even realize it. So in seven in 2016, 17 point or seven point nine billion dollars was spent. In two years, it's going to be 20 million, 21 million, 21 billion, sorry. 21 billion dollars is going to be spent on this. So, my recommendation to you is go out to your local newspapers. If you live in Brentwood, I think there's a Brentwood little newspaper, Webster Groves, wherever it is, and start writing advertorials, right? Um, start getting those out in front of people. Make yourself look really, really good. Um, give, offer something of value. Um, Dean Jackson's the marketing guy I mentioned before. Um, he talks about uh, more cheese and less whiskers. Um, as the advertisers, you are the whiskers, you're the cat going after the mouse. Mice love cheese, so offer more cheese, offer more value. Hi, you don't, you don't want to show that you're a big advertiser. You don't, you don't want to pound your chest like a lot of terms do. 150 years of, of experience, 180 trials won, whatever it is. Billions of dollars recovered. Um, clients want to know what you're going to do for them, right? right? They don't care about what you've done for yourself. Right. So when you offer something, you offer something of value in these. You need these with sponsored ca uh, content, video advertorials. Um, I, you can do like a consumer alert with the mesh case, right, Doug? You can say, this is a consumer alert. Vaginal mesh is harming women in this, 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 this way. Um, and here's what you need to do about it. And at the very end, call us at 888-550-4026. So it's a consumer alert telling them, uh, this huge concern, or let's say it's a pharmaceutical drug, or whatever it is in your industry, um, you talk about it. This is a consumer alert, or if you do wills, last year so such uh, so many million people died without a will, and this is how much this is how much money was wasted, or this is how much money went back to the government because of that. Whatever it is, you can do an advertorial on that. And at the very end, you slide in your advertisement, and maybe maybe you get that client product. So, we offer services, we don't really offer products. Uh, I guess some attorneys can offer products, for example, will packages, whatever it is. I consider that a, a product, but it's hard for us to do product placement, but there are ways of doing it. Um, Chet Pleban is a very good uh, example of how you do it. He goes on Fox 2 News in the morning all the time, and he, he talks about law stuff, they ask him questions, and he offers. That's a good way, of just, that's just product placement. I mean, he's offering services, but he's view him as a product. He does a very good job of it. I mean, so think about outside the box ways of getting in front of people throughout programming. It's product points. That's all it is. Another example, this is uh, a less, it's more obvious way of native advertising. It's sponsored links, 
sponsored ads, uh, promoted tweets. That if you're on your uh, phone and you're on Facebook, you, it's sometimes hard to figure out what's an ad and what's not an ad as you're scrolling. That's another way of uh, doing native advertising. And Facebook is still super cheap when it comes to advertising. Um, I think it's extremely effective. You have to view your whole marketing. It's not I do this and then I get this client. You can't view it that way. It's a it's a broad marketing campaign. So it's more like getting your brain out there, getting people knowing about you. Um, and so don't think that if I spend fifty dollars on Facebook ads that I'm going to get twelve clients. It's just not how it works. It's it's a constant marketing, right? It's a constant marketing to these people getting in front of these people. All right, Aaron, did you respond to my assistance email? I did. Yeah. Okay. Did you get, what was what was her email? Um, it was AI.com or XI or something. No, but what, what what did she say to you? Um, let's see. Well, oh, the first one. Um, let's see. Darren, thanks for calling about my case, and I responded, and then got the auto one that says, "We received your email. Thank you so much for sending it. We respond to emails." That was my email. Yes. Yeah, and then um, she sent me uh, from Amy. Hi, Darren. Happy to get something on Tyson's calendar. Does Tuesday, December 20th at 8 a.m. work? Alternatively, Tyson is available at such and such, such and such. His office is at 1717 Park. Perfect. So, that's artificial intelligence. That's There's no real Amy. She's fake. It's artificial intelligence, okay? Which, which you don't know that until you go to the very bottom. She says at the very bottom, uh, art, what does it art, say? It says, x.ai, artificial intelligence that schedules meetings. Correct. So, this will, in 2017, really take off. Right? This is just one example, right? but I wanted to demonstrate it to you to show it works. Amy, I call I, I, I still call her by her name, it's even though it's an id. Amy does, saves me hours a week of scheduling things, scheduling meetings, doing. I have not had the guts of doing with depositions yet, but I'm, that's the next step, where you can save time with depositions. The emails back and forth. She takes care of that for you, all right? so. You're going to see a lot more of this, though, in email, messenger bots, Facebook. Now. <coughs> you're going to get. You're not going to know that you're talking to a bot. You're going to be talking to a bot, but you're going to think it's a person. All right. So, we can take advantage of that. Though you can create a series of rules. And what I've done with my emails, I've created a series of rules where I like to have coffee, where my office is, where uh, I create all these different things of where I like to. For example, my coffee spot that I like to meet at is Caldi's Coffee on Crondall and Clayton, right? That's where she tries to schedule all my coffee meetings. Um, if I have lunch, I like to have lunch at first watching Clayton. That's where I like to have these. So I have all these things, all these rules set up, and she knows that. Now, you could break the system if you go off go all haywire uh, in your communication, but I wouldn't have expected that from you. But there are ways of like just completely throwing her off, which has happened. So you're gonna have some mistakes through this because they are bots, right? But for the most part, she gets it right. What what is that? Is it an app? Are you? Is it connected to Google? What is it? It's it's a it's a well, company. You it's a so you go to just go to x.ai is the website. So x.ai, and you can sign up. There is a free version. The free version. There's a wait list. So I pay forty dollars a month. I can tell you if you if you value your time, it will. It's forty dollars is well worth it, right? It's well worth your time. And if you think about just every week, just scheduling appointments, and meetings, whatever it is. If, I, if, if Darren was a client calling in, and let's, I mean, I wouldn't normally do, deal with a client that way, but I would, I would more deal with people like Gary. Gary wouldn't have lunch with me or coffee. I would send a, a, an email like that to him. But if it's a client that I know is going to be a client, I, mean, I may send it to, to some, uh, some, a similar email to, like I did to Darren, where I'd send, hey, let's meet next, next week. So if it's like a referral from another attorney, and I know it's a slam dunk, uh, I don't generally have to But um, that's how you should do it. And then chatbots. Something that uh, is another thing that you can do. Have you have you heard of the Engage project? It's the chat. Do you use that, Gary? In yours? You use chat that comes to you, right? I use a chat. If someone's on my website for five, whatever x amount of time, pops okay. up. Yeah, pops up. up. Can we help you? Right. So the Engage project is a company they call attorneys all over town. They say, Hey, we're an Engage project. We will work with the dean. He said to give you a call, which is never true. I, they're always they're always missing an attorney that I've never heard of before, but. They offer a service where it's a live chat operator and they'll, they'll filter them through to you. Well, chat bots are going to replace them. So if Engage doesn't get on it, they're going to get replaced really quickly. Uh, because you're going to create these set of rules where these chat bots are going to replace them and get to answer all these questions. That way, 
uh, someone like Gary's not going to sit by his computer to <coughs> answer these chats. I'm not going to sit by my, my computer to, ask, uh, to, to answer these chats. Jim Hacking does the same thing. Um, these chat bots are going to do all the work for us. So, something that, and I'm sure I did the same thing, it was hard, hard for me to, to kind of get my head wrapped around the artificial intelligence, but something else that's going to be even bigger is analyzing our numbers, right? So there are companies now developing artificial intelligence to, to alert you, hey Tyson, you, there's a trend in your firm and the firm, it's not a good trend, or hey, this is a really good trend, keep doing what you're doing. There are companies now developing that's going to link to your bank accounts, link, link to your email, link to your firm accounts, all this kind of stuff. But it's going to track this for you, and it's going to give you insights into the back page of your firm. That's also something coming in 2017. So I will tell you, whenever they launch things like this, it's usually best to get in early because it's much cheaper and you can lock in rates. So you want to get in, 17 is probably the time to get into it. <coughs> because in 2018, 19, 20, that's when all the big companies are going to start flooding in and you're going to be left, left with these huge price tags for the guy. All right. The last thing I want to talk about is immersive experience marketing. These are the things, like this is more generally, okay, not, I'm not going to go into specifics like I did with Facebook and YouTube and all that. But you know, 360 degree videos, live webinars, <coughs> augmented reality. Has everyone heard of the Pokemon Go thing? Right. I didn't get that either, but a lot of people did. At its peak, they were making $10 million a day. $10 million a day. If you think that's going away, it's not. It's not. You're insane if things going away. So there are going to be a lot of things that come into our lives uh, with augmented reality, immersive <coughs> experience marketing, where people want to experience something when they, when, they, when they come to you. So as you're shaping your firm to find experience, as they come into your office, you need to think about things like this. As they come to your website, as you're creating marketing <coughs> funnels, directing them down the road to hiring you, you need to start thinking about things like this. So um, one thing that I've thought about with this, this sort of throws my uh, artificial intelligence and bots out of the window. It's going to be a little more difficult, but what if someone, if you came to, someone came to your website and there was a chat window popped up with your assistant sitting there willing to answer some questions? They're, they're seeing an actual <coughs> person sitting there willing to talk to you. That's more an, a, a, an immersive experience for them because they're getting feedback from somebody, right? It's not just a bot, it's not something they're typing into. So um, the key is to provide some sort of level of interaction. Right? That's the key. So beyond everything else is providing that interaction with them. As opposed to, here's my website, you read it, whatever. Attention spans are not growing. They're getting less and less and less. And so your content has to be denser and denser and denser. <clears throat> All right, so again, I want you to look at this trend for 2017, and this is beyond. It's 2017 to 2020 and beyond. We don't know what's going to really pass that, but it's video, right? It's all about video. If you're not comfortable getting in front of a video, find someone that, in your firm that is. Definitely Gary is. Gary's com comfortable doing this. You're a very confident individual. It's a confident. Thank you. Just make sure you're awake over there. I am. Um, all right, so you can ignore everything I just told you if you have no desire to hustle, okay? Because if you go home today and you're not going to want to hustle, none of this is going to work for you, okay? So you can ignore everything I just told you. And I can tell you, some of you are not going to do anything I just said, and that's fine, all right? Um, uh -huh. This also is a force if you're fine paying hundreds, if not thousands of dollars for leads. There are firms that that's all they do. They pay thousands of dollars for leads, and they're okay with that. They work up those cases, their profit margins are smaller, but that's fine. This is a different way of thinking. And if you have it all figured out, well, good luck. No, this, this isn't for you. You, you can go to your own thing, right? So, I promise you, if you just do videos on YouTube, I promise you, you're gonna increase your presence among your peers. You're going to increase your presence among your sphere of friends and family and whatever. Um, I'm going to give you just an anecdote, an anecdotal example of um, how things have changed for me when I started doing videos. Before I'd walk into court, a judge wouldn't have any clue who I was, and I'd make a habit of friending as many judges as I can, and now they know who I am. It's because I do a lot of videos. I used to put a lot more videos on Facebook than I do now. 
I don't do it as much now, but I do them. I do a ton of videos still. They just go onto YouTube. We uh, work, work more on optimizing those, but they know who I am now. Um, it's it's there are people that I didn't know who they were, and they say, "Hey, Tyson, how's it going?" It's not that they really know me. It's that they've seen my video now. They they recognize me and they know my name now. All right, so you're going to increase your presence. Um, I will tell you when you start doing video, there are going to be haters out there, right? They're not they're they're not going to like what you're doing. Change is, is tough for some people. That's fine. Let them hate. That's fine. Um, but I get a ton of leads through Facebook, and it's it's because of video, right? Because of video. And I guarantee if you do video, you're going to make a lot more money. You're just going to. Um, so you need to do it. So I want to tell you really quick about my system for shooting a video. Um, I'll tell you about my equipment really quick. Um, so what I have is I have a fairly decent camera. It's a Fujitsu, not top of the top of the line, but the 1080p. So you want to have something that's fairly good with HD video. Um, you want to have a lavalier microphone. I use a corded one. Do you use wireless, Gary, or you no. use cord? All right, I would use a cord because the wireless sucks. I've tried it. I bought it. I spent extra money, and it just it was terrible. It was crackly. It was really bad. No one's gonna know what a lavalier microphone is. It's just the microphone that attaches right <laughs> I'm just saying. Just take a, uh, it's I have a different one. That Mine is, I use that one for deposition right. and everything. So that picks up sound around the room. But the lavalier is the one that clips like a exactly. news, news app. Looks just like this, but it clips on your tie. Good question. So you'll have that. And then you have, you want to have a minimum of three camera or uh uh, lights. I have four. I've got a shadow light that goes behind me. I've got a boom light that goes above me. And I've got lights on either side. Right? Um, I have green screens at home and at work. And so I've got basically two studio studios set up. And it's much cheaper than you think it is. It sounds expensive, but it's not. Um, you can. I mostly use the green screen at my house, and I don't use the green screen mostly at my work. So I've got a brick background that I can use. Um, I will tell you, the non-green screen videos are more effective. Right, um, because they're not as polished. People watch more of the videos that are not polished. You, that's counterintuitive, but the ones that look more natural, those are the ones that people watch. Okay, so you want to keep that in mind. Uh, whatever the, the camera, lights, microphone, uh, green screen. So once I've recorded the video, oh, you want to have an SD card. You and I recommend having three or four of them because sometimes they go bad when you're constantly <laughs> using them. So I just my process. What I do is I shoot the video. It's usually one to three minutes, whatever it is. I do a series of them at a time, and then I will take the SD card out, I walk over to my computer, I'll plug it in my computer, I will upload it to Google Drive. Uh, once it's on Google Drive, Nadish knows to pull it off of Google Drive. All right, he will edit it. He will then contact Gino via Slack. Um, uh, you don't need to know these names of people, but I'll tell you anyways, because this is a system. Uh, he will then transcribe these. Uh, then once he's done doing that, he will let Nadish know these are done. Here is the link to these transcriptions. Nadish will then package them together. He will upload the video to YouTube. I have given him exactly what tags and what content to put on the video below it. That we have used a, used a template, and he fills in what the video is about. All right, so we put that below it. The tags are important so you can identify people can identify what type of video it is. They can find you. Okay. And then once I publish, he publishes that to my WordPress page, and it's done. All right. Uh, and then you're, the reason why we transcribe those, Gary, why is that? So people can search it. That's exactly right. So if you just have the video, they can't search it. But you get the Google juice from it, right? When you have the, the content below the video. And What's your cost associated with uh, Nadish, Farina, and Gino? I, you know what? I'm glad you asked me because I forgot to tell it. Upwork.com is where I find my virtual assistants. And they... Upwork.com. Upwork.com. Upwork it is great because you can pay these virtual assistants that are all over the world, right? All over the world. And I will tell you, I pay very little um, because they're, they're in Egypt, India, China. Actually, I don't, think, I don't think China is on Upwork. They're all over the world, all over the world. And you can get them for very, very cheap. Right? So I think Nadish is $6 an hour. You can get them for $3 an hour. You can get them for super, super cheap, right? The most in, uh, expensive virtual assistant I pay is Francisco and he's $20 an hour because he has a more complex skill. Uh, it, it was, uh, so there's a reason for that. Um, you can pay depending on English level. So uh, that's gonna be cheaper the, the, the lower their English level. Uh, okay. um, 
So that's, I go upward.com, that's where I get them, and it's fairly cheap. So um, they know to push the video. You know, they know to, to do it quick and, and not waste money. All right, so if you've received value from this presentation, I would appreciate if you gave me reviews on Google, Facebook, and Yelp. Um, if you had to choose one, I would prefer Google, then Yelp, then Facebook. I have plenty on Facebook, um, but uh, Google and Yelp are the, the big ones. All right. Any, any questions from this? I have a question. Yes. With regard to the live chat, um, numbers nine and ten up there, and I'm old, so. <laughs> With regard to the live chat, how do you, I do family law primarily, how do you do the conflict search or protect against a conflict issue? Because we have def definitive one side or the other of the case. Well, I would say this, uh, is you're talking about only, like, they're on your website? Okay. It would be no different than if they were calling into your firm because while they're all they're going to be doing is collecting the lead information, they're not going to be analyzing the case for you. So it's basically more collecting that lead information. So I don't think that there's any issue with the conflict. They'll pass it it's, because it's no different than a lead service. It's no different than uh, if you hire an engage project to do a live a live person taking the lead. They're, they're collecting that information, passing it on to you. You then check your conflicts at that point. And that's only if I can if I can add that's only Susan that's only your initial contact they'll say hey I got a question about my divorce or custody or blah blah well what's your then you have someone that you can have someone at your well what's your question da 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 well would you like to schedule a meeting with Susan to come in and meet with it we charge this much an hour because you don't want you want to give a little free you want to give a little cheese but you want to be a little whiskery too um, and I have someone um, that I one of my answers he I use Zopim Z-O-P-I-M and he uh, he answers the first few questions and then he comes and gives me the message and I do the follow-up call to really see if it's something that I'm interested in pursuing. <clears throat> so I think with the initial inquiry level that that you're doing you don't have to worry about conflicts. You comfortable with that? I feel like you're not comfortable with that. Not comfortable. <laughs> Well, you got to be careful. In your bit, you know, you, I get it. Yeah, um, it's a lot more specific as to who you're dealing with. Well, you need to spend, and, and what I would say is, that, you know, in order to honor all our client, then maybe the second or third question is, in order, in order to honor our client confidences, we, we need to make sure that we can help you. Da 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 da. Can you give us what this information? Then we'll contact you and they'll get it. And you only want the people who, you only, that's a good screen too, because you only want to represent people who don't mind that vetting. That's what I'm thinking. The shorter, the better. You know, the shorter. Before That's a whole get other to. system. It's screening the good leads versus the bad leads. Your whole day on that. Anyone else? Anybody else? How many, quite, or, uh, how many hours a week do you allocate for just marketing? No less than 20. Wow. Um, and the reason is I can auto I automate a bunch. And mm -hmm. so it allows me that time to do that. It's, it's very important. If you don't automate, you're doing yourself a huge disservice. You're going to lower your costs in general. You're going to lower your staff need whenever you have automation. Um, so I send an email a day for the first seven days that are completely automated to clients. So with personal injury, and I'll wrap up, Gary. Um, in the first 30 days, it's very important after an auto accident because here you all do personal injury, right? Yes. So you have the cooling off period. It's after 30 days, the vultures come out, right? They're the ones that get the, 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 the leads online. They get the, the high patrol reports. And they start attacking your clients and, and sending them packets, right? Well. Uh, you got to protect those from those vultures. So I get as many contacts in those first 30 days as I can. So these letters are generated automatically. These emails are generated automatically. So they don't come in sweeping into my clients. Because I'm a smaller firm, so I got to protect protect myself. Yeah. 